There are a couple of easy softwares to use to create an academic poster. And the one I'm going to show today is Publisher, which is software specifically for publications. So there are a lot of useful tools inside to help with creating an academic poster. The other software is PowerPoint. Uh, however, it is possible to create an academic poster inside, but there are not so many tools as uh, in Publisher. So Publisher would be the recommended option. When you open Publisher, it's going to give you an option to choose a number of different templates, depending on what kind of publication you're creating. However, there is no template for academic poster. So you'll need to start from scratch by creating simply a blank publication. The default options for blank publications are in the top corner and they are A4 a portrait and landscape option, which is obviously way too small for a poster. The usual size for an academic poster is A1. However, please do check with your module handbooks if you have been asked to create a different one, but the usual ones are A1, so that's the one I'm going to show in this vidcast. Because A4 is too small, so I'm going to go to more blank page sizes um, to see what other options are there. And again, I have more choice, but I will need to create my own because A1 is not one of the available options. So I'm just going to click on create new page size. I'm going to call it A1 but I'll need to set up also its height and width. The height and width are set to the size A1. However, uh, will it be a portrait orientation or landscape orientation will really depend on the requirements for your poster and also the content of your poster. Sometimes your content will fit better in one layout compared to uh, the other. So please do check with your module handbook and just choose whatever you think may suit better your content if you've not been given specific instructions and be prepared to just change it if it doesn't fit. I'm going to choose a landscape format, which means the width is the bigger value uh, compared to the height. And A1 size is 84.1 centimeters width and the height is 59.4. And I'm just going to click OK, which will create the size. And before I go to start putting the content in the poster, I want to choose a color scheme and a font scheme for my poster. There's a big list of different color schemes, and you'll just need to choose one that will suit your content or the information you're presenting. Make sure it's appropriate. There is a very, very long list here. You can create your own if you feel comfortable doing that. I'm just going to choose a bright one to start with. And you can change your mind and choose something else if you decide to. And it will recolor um, all the elements you have on your poster if you have consistently used the color scheme. Then I need to choose a font scheme. When you click on the font scheme option, you will see a long list of different sets of fonts. Some of them are the same type, like this one, for example, casual. You can see the font suggestion for headings is pretty much the same as the font suggestion for the content. The same with the next one, which is civic. Have a look through all of them and consider how you're going to be printing or presenting your poster because that will inform your choice. If you are printing your poster and you're printing big size poster like the standard A1, then you can choose more or less any font combination you like. And I would suggest definitely avoid the ones that are non-standard like Gothic or handwritten. If you are going to present your poster either in a smaller form or even project it rather than print it, I would suggest go for fonts that are much more straightforward to sans serif fonts like Arial or Calibri, especially for the text on the poster itself, because that will be a lot easier to read if it's smaller font size. So I'm just going to go for the save option here. I'm just going to choose Office One, uh, which gives me two different suggestions for fonts, Cumbria for headings and Calibri for the text. Again, those are recommendations. You can use different one, but stick to the maximum of two different types of fonts and use them consistently. So all the text on your poster with one font and all the headings, either with the same font or a different one, but all headings must be the same font. And if you click create, it's going to go inside and will give you your blank template for your poster. This blue line that you see in the corner is your suggested margin. 
and I would definitely say stay within the margin. Don't put any information right to the edge of the paper because it doesn't look good. Keep within the margin itself and even a bit further inside. The next stage is to visually split up the poster in all the different columns or rows or, or even boxes that you're going to need, which will help you structure better the information while you're designing it. There is a tool in Publisher that will allow you to visually split it on the screen uh, using guidelines. So if you go to the page design tab, you will see an option guides. And if you click there, you will see a number of different predefined sets of guidelines. I'm just going to go for a standard three column one. And when I click it, you can see the guidelines appeared on the screen. Those guidelines will not print. They will appear just on the screen and I can move them. Simply go over them, click over the mouse and drag it. And you can see that you can move it. If you need to create additional guideline, for example, I want to put one right in the middle of the poster, horizontal one. So if I need a horizontal, I simply go to the horizontal ruler, click, hold down and drag to get this guideline to the place where I want it. And if I need a vertical one, I just go to the vertical ruler, click, hold it and drag it until it is in the place where you want it. If you want to remove it, simply click on it and drag it outside the poster and it will disappear. There you go. So I'm just going to keep them for now as a visual guidance, but they may not be the final look at the poster. Usually three columns works well for most circumstances, but with your particular information, that may not be the case. So be prepared to go into two columns or even four or even change it to a portrait one. If you need to change to a portrait, simply go to page design and you will see the orientation option and you can switch between portrait and landscape. You also have access from the same tab to the color scheme, so you can change them later on if you want, and also the font schemes. But for now, I'm just going to concentrate on the top side of the poster, and I'm going to design the title, the author's name, and the logo that is going to go at the top. So I'm going to go to the home tab and start designing all the elements I need on the poster. At the moment, what you have is blank canvas. It's not a document. So I cannot just click and type. What I need is to put a text box and then I can put the text inside the text box. This way of working allows you to be a lot more flexible in arranging all the elements of your poster. So I'm going to create a text box. You can see the option in the home tab, simply click on it, then go to where you want your text to start. Don't start from the top corner because that's where the logo normally goes. So your title is not going to start from the top left corner. It's going to be probably more towards here. I'm just going to click, hold down, drag it until it is the shape and size that you need. And then when you release, it will create a text box so you can type inside. When you start typing, you can see that it types with tiny font. That is because you see your poster fitting on the screen, but it's actually a one size, which is quite large. And the default font size is font size 10. So for a large poster, font size 10 is way too small. The recommended font size for title of a poster is font size 90. If your title is a bit too long, uh, font size 90 will not be uh, good because it will take up too much space on your poster. So you have to reduce the font size a bit. Try to keep it above 70 and try to keep your title to a maximum of two lines of text. Any more than that, then it starts to look like a paragraph rather than a title. So try to rephrase it if it's really long, see if you can make it shorter and make it fit into one or maximum two lines of text. So mine is quite short. I'm just going to create a poster about the Learning Development Center. So I want to put it in font size 90. Those big font sizes are not available in the drop down list of the standard font sizes. So there's absolutely no need to look in there. Simply click where the font size is and type the font size you like. And then when you press enter, it will apply the font size to your text. The text box is there and my title is in there. However, if the text box is a bit too small for the title, I'm just going to show you what will happen. You see how the red dots appeared on the side of the text box. And that's an indication that there's more text than you can actually see. The text box is too small to fit all the text contained in there. 
So you'll either need to change the font size or make the text box bigger or delete some of it, but make sure it actually is all visible. And you can see the moment it's big enough to display all the text, the dots on the sides and the corners turn white again. You also have to consider the alignment of the title. Usually center looks best. However, it may be different in different circumstances. I'm not just going to show you how to put it in the center and you can try to do it manually and can adjust it more or less to be in the center. The problem is that if it's not exactly in the center, if it's a small difference just, just off the center, when it's actually printed full size A1, that small difference is suddenly going to be quite a big difference. So it may be a lot more visible if it's not exactly in the center. So I would suggest instead of trying to do it manually and just moving it to the right place, make sure it's actually aligned in the center. To make sure the text is aligned, the first thing you need to do is align the text inside the text box to center the same way you would align normal text in a Word document, for example. If you go to the Home tab, you will see the options here in the paragraph group and you can center it, which will center the text inside the text box. However, I don't know if the text box is actually in the center of the poster itself. So the next stage is to make sure that the text box itself is center of the poster. To do that, I need to go and select the text box. When I am inside the text box or on the frame of the text box, you will see two new tabs appeared. One is drawing tools format and the other one is text box tools format. So one of them deals with the text content, the text formatting of that text box. The other one deals with the box itself. I am trying to align the box. I've already sorted out the text. So I need to go to the drawing tools format, which is the orange tab and look inside here for alignment option. And there it is in the arrange group. When I click on it though, it's not going to allow me to align to anything because it doesn't know align to what. So I need to specify that I'm aligning relative to the margin guides, which in this case is the actual poster. I want to center it according to the poster itself. So once I selected that option, if I go again to align, this time it gives me the option because it knows what to use as a reference point and I can choose to align center. And there we are. Now the box is in the center of the poster and the text is in the center of the box. So the actual title is right in the middle. The next stage is to create another text box and put in your name. As an author of that poster. Recommended font size is 60. However, if you've already had to reduce the title of the poster, to a smaller font size, you have to reduce your name as an author to appropriate smaller font size. Anything between 40 and 60 points will look um, good. And I would definitely recommend that you create all the different elements in separate text boxes because that will allow you to move them independently and make sure you find the best place for them because now I can choose to have it lined up with the end of it or maybe the beginning or maybe in the middle and you can see much easier which one would be the preferred option. As I'm moving it as well, you may have noticed a little purple line will appear. When you see this little purple line, it simply shows when those two objects are aligned with each other. And in this case, they are aligned to the center. So those two text boxes are perfectly aligned. So I can leave it in the middle. Just make sure that the name is also centered within the box itself. So both of those will be in the center, but it depends how much information you need to type in terms of author, because you may need to put uh, not just your name, but a group poster, maybe more than one name. Sometimes your supervisor's name need to go there. And sometimes they may ask you to put uh, your student ID and other information. So potentially you will need to find a different place and find what works best depending on the information you're putting on the poster. So put it in a separate text box and move it around until you find the most suitable space. The next stage is to decide if I'm going to have a background color on the poster. There are advantages and disadvantages of having a background color. It's much simpler just to use a white background, but if I use background color, some sort of very simple pale color. I already bring a bit more life, a bit more interest to this poster without really doing much work. 
So there are advantages and disadvantages, but if you choose to have a background color, then you need to decide what other colors will match with it. Any image you insert, make sure it actually works with that background color. So there is a bit more to do if you decide to have a background color. I'm just going to create a background color for this particular poster just to illustrate, but it's absolutely fine to leave it white and instead use color uh, different lines, frames, or even some of the text. You can use color to bring some sort of interest to that instead of just being black and white. So I'm going to go to the page design tab and look at the background options and you can see I have choice of different colors. Those colors will be based on my color scheme. If I change my color scheme, those options will change. And you have the base colors of my color scheme with different intensity. And also you have an option to choose a gradient color. So going from darker to lighter to dark again. If you are going to choose to use gradient background, you have to be careful that you're not confusing the reader because if I'm organizing my information on this poster in columns and the reader is supposed to follow columns, if I choose a gradient color that shows rows, that is going to be confusing. But I can choose the one that changes the color in columns, which will emphasize once again that they need to read the information in columns. So you'll need to decide for yourself what is going to be the best and the easiest option as well. So I'm just going to choose a pale color and I'll leave it like that for now. But again, as I said, you can change it at any point. You can change the color or you can change the background, you can change the color scheme. You have plenty of options to change your mind. And then we have to insert the university logo. You have to have the university logo on the poster. And that is a standard practice for any academic poster. You need to show the affiliation of the author. If it's more than one organization involved, if you're presenting, for example, information on a collaborative project and it's more than one, you'll need to include the logos of the other institutions involved as well. This is going to be just the university poster. So I'm just going to include the university logo. One warning about the logo, please don't just go and Google the logo because you will find it probably not very good quality, but you will most probably find it as a JPEG file. The problem with the JPEG files is that the logo will not be on transparent background. It's going to be on a white background. And if you place it on your colored background, you will have a white box and the logo in that box. So it's not going to look very nice. Instead, you can find a good quality logo file with transparent background on the LDC pages. So if you go to the LDC pages, you can access them through GCLR. Just log into your GCLR account and you will see a box on the right hand side to the LDC. And if you go there, simply go to the other button at the corner and go to useful stuff. And here you will find three links to download different versions of the university logo. The first link will give you the standard university logo, which is blue and black, and that would be the recommended option. However, if you decide to use very blue background, if you use a standard logo like that, it will almost blend in with the background. So it's not really a good idea. Then you can choose to use a white version of the logo or a black version of the logo. Please do not use any other color combination. Those are the allowed options. I'm going to use a standard university logo. So I'm just going to right click and choose save target as, and I'm simply going to place it on the desktop. You can save it somewhere where you can actually find it. And if I go back to my poster, I can go to the insert tab, choose to insert a picture and then find where that picture is. Now the default size will be large because this is a high quality image but that's the better option. You need good high quality images on your poster. So you're always aiming to find images that are large. Then you can reduce them to fit better on the poster itself. When you're reducing the size of uh, an image, always use the corner dots to resize it. Otherwise you will be distorting the proportions. And in the case of the logo, that's going to be very visible because of this perfect circle you can immediately see if it's been squashed. So simply use the corners that will resize proportionally. And then you'll have to find where to locate the logo. If you're not sure, the easiest option is just place it in one side, have a look, 
see if you like it, and place it on the other side. There are no specific rules, is it going to be better on the left or the right? It really depends on the logo itself. This is slightly large, so I'm going to reduce it a little bit more. Generally, the size of the logo, the height of the logo should be the same height as this top banner consisting of the title and the author's name. So roughly about that kind of size. And in the case of the university logo, because of the shape itself, because of that circle, it does look slightly better to put it in the left corner where the circle will frame the corner and the text will lead towards the poster rather than going outside the poster like it will be on the other side. And if that's all that you have as a title, something very, very short, you'll need to find something to put in the top right corner. Otherwise, it's going to be quite bare. You have to find a way to utilize the space on your poster. You don't want it too crammed full of stuff, but you don't want it with big white spaces either. So find an image that will be meaningful and will illustrate the content of the poster, will be strongly associated with your program or the topic, anything that will be useful and meaningful to use. If your title is long, that could potentially mean that you will use all of this space to put in the title. So there will be no issue. But if it's short like this, you will need to find something to put in the top right corner. Now, moving on to the actual poster itself, because we're trying to create something that will have the consistent look. What we need is, in fact, just to design one of the sections of the poster, because the other sections will follow the same design. So once you have decided how your heading is going to look, how the text is going to look, how the flow is going to work. All you do is design one of the sections and then copy and paste it on the other different sections and just change the heading itself and the text itself and you will achieve that consistent look. So I'm just going to concentrate on designing one section, just the introduction. If you feel comfortable in designing something from scratch, you can go and simply create your own design for the heading and for the text, how the text would look, text box itself, or even formatting of the text. Or if you don't feel so comfortable, there are actually tools inside the Publisher that will allow you to achieve more of a designer look. There are tools available in the Insert tab and within the building blocks group, you will see an option called page parts. Simply click and you will see different kind of page parts you can insert. So you can choose to have a really more designer look for your heading and keep that one more attractive and keep the text of the section or simpler. You can choose pull quotes instead, which is just a fancy text box uh, in a way with frames or you know curved edges. Uh, background, anything like that. There are options also for sidebar or stories, which is a combination of a heading, text, and sometimes pictures as well. But if your entire poster is sidebars or stories, that may be a bit too much. So I'm just going to keep a simple option. I'm just going to use heading and um, design my poster or headings like that and keep the text simple. But this is a very limited choice. I'm going to go to more page part at the bottom which will open up more choices. Again, I just need to collect all headings to see all available options. The colors come from the color scheme. So if you have picked a different color scheme, your colors will be different. But again, that can change very quickly by simply changing the color scheme. So look through all of those and find one that you like and it's suitable for your content and it will feel better for your poster rather than just simple text. And remember, you can modify this content. I'm just going to choose this one. It's my favorite. And I'm going to click Insert. And it will place this heading simply in the middle of the poster because it simply doesn't know where to put it. So I'm just going to zoom in. The zoom slider is at the bottom right corner. I'm going to zoom in right in so you can see exactly what I'm dealing with. And you can already see there's a lot of stuff here that you don't need. So newsletter title obviously needs to change. So you can just click and type introduction. Business name and all of this I absolutely don't need and it's way too long for my need. So I want to modify it. And this is not a text box. It's not a picture. It's in fact a group of text boxes and lines and drawings and boxes and sometimes pictures as well. But because it's a group, 
I can ungroup it and remove all the elements I don't want and modify the ones that I want to keep. All I have to do is click once anywhere on that object and go to the drawing tools and look in the arrange group and you will see the option to ungroup. Depending on what kind of object you've inserted, you may need to ungroup more than once because sometimes it's a group of groups. So in my case, it was just one group. So at the moment I clicked ungroup, that's it. There's no more option to ungroup. So every single element now is completely separate. So I can delete this extra text boxes. If I click inside and just delete, it will delete the, the content, but the box will stay. I want to get rid of the box itself. So I can click on the box frame itself and then press delete on the keyboard and that will delete the actual box itself. That as well, don't want. This is too long. I don't want it that long. I want it shorter. Same with this one. And my text box is also sticking out. I want it. That's probably closer to what I imagine. You can also add additional elements like this particular box is really handy to add a text box inside and put a number. Obviously I need to make it bigger and make sure it all nicely lined up. And when you're happy with your design, just going to change the font. I'm going to use the recommended fonts from my font scheme and I have Cumbria recommended for headings. There we go. Same with this. By default, it came with Times German and I don't want that. I wanted Cumbria. And at the moment, I said all of those are completely independent objects. However, I would rather keep them as one object because I'm going to have to copy and paste it. So I want to keep it as a group, which will make my job a lot easier. So that means I need to group them again. In order to group them, I need to select every single one of those objects and that will allow um, them to group as one. The easiest way to do that is simply to click in one of the further corners, a bit away from the object itself. Simply click, hold down and drag until you cover everything. And that, when you release, you will see it selects every object within that um, selection. And that means I can go and click on group and that becomes one object again. Now I need to zoom out until I see the entire poster and then find the good location for the heading. I can simply go zoom out. That would take forever. Instead, there is a little button here in the corner, which allows me to zoom out until I see the entire page on the screen. And now I can grab this heading and position it within the first column. And then I can copy it and paste it. And I'll paste another one here, another one here, and another one here, which means I can align them later. Uh, that will be, let's save my methods. Uh, that will be number two. This will be findings. Uh, be number three. This will be discussion. Number four. And that will be the conclusions. And we number five. You don't need numbers, but they do help sometimes, especially when the flow is not so clear. So I added them because design allowed me. Now I want to make sure that all of those headings are nicely aligned with each other. So I'm just going to grab the second one and move until I see those purple lines showing me that it is aligned with the first heading, which is perfect. Now this one, I need it aligned to that and also to the center of the poster. So I, I move it until I see the purple line showing that. Now this one will show me that it's aligned with the top headings there. And this one, I'm going to move around until I see it aligned. And this is the initial stage. However, once you put the content, it may not be suitable at all. So you may end up changing the layout completely and you have to be prepared to do that. So this are my headings and roughly where I anticipate uh, the content is going to go. I need to put another text box here for the introduction for the actual text. 
and then I can either type in the actual text or if it's already prepared, let's say in a Word document or I'm copying it from an existing website or anything like that, you can just copy and paste it like you would do in any other software. Um, I'm going to copy some information about the Learning Development Center from our website. So I'm just going to go straight in the student homepage, uh, academic support and School of Health and Life Sciences. And I'm just going to copy some of this text. That's the background for the Learning Development Center. And I can just right click and paste it. When I'm pasting, I have a few different options here. Now, usually you should be using this option, uh, which says keep text only, which will remove any formatting from the text. We'll leave just the text itself because then you can format it any way you like. If you're copying it from a Word document and you want to preserve some of the formatting, for example, if you have a bulleted list or some text in bold and you would rather keep it, you can use merge formatting, which will preserve some of this additional formatting. But because I took it from a website, I just want to keep just the text. And you can see how tiny it is because it's font size 10 by default. The font, standard font size for the content of a poster should be around 30. Very rarely you would be able to achieve 30 because it does take up a lot more space for your amount of text. But if you need to reduce the font size, please don't go below 24. So anything between 24 points to 30 points will look absolutely fine for an A1 size poster. If it is smaller poster size, you'll need to adjust the font, all the different fonts. So if your poster is A2, for example, that is a reduction of 70%. So your recommended font sizes for the headings and for the title of the poster and for the author will need to be reduced by 70%. So you can calculate it. It said recommended font size for a one size uh, poster for a title is 90 points. So multiply this by 0 0.7 and you will see what would be the recommended font size for a title on an A2 size poster. If you need to create an A3 size poster, again, another 70% of uh, the original, 70% of the original font size, which is 30% reduction. And you can see what would be the recommended font size. So I'm just going to change this to 30. Again, I'm just not going to look through the drop down options, I'm just going to place 30 and you can see it's not enough. So I'm just going to reduce it to 24, see if that's better. Yep, that works. Potentially I may increase it. Another thing I want to highlight um, that is important. By default, publisher will try to optimize the space and uh, how much text it can fit. And because of that, it hyphenates the text. It breaks up the words if they don't fit. If you look in here, it says life sciences. It broke up the word sciences. This is the default behavior because it tries to optimize the, the, the amount of text it can fit, but it's not acceptable. So you'll need to stop it from hyphenating. It's a very easy thing to do. Simply click inside the text box, go to the text box tools because you're dealing with formatting the text and you will see the hyphenation option here at the beginning of the tab. Click on it and simply untick the option to aut automatically do it. And that will stop it. So I'm going to zoom out again. And this is how the text would look. There we go. So this is how you can put the text. You can type it or you can copy and paste it from existing document if you've already have it prepared. Uh, but you literally create a text box and then place it. And then you can adjust the text box size and the text will reorganize itself to make sure it fits. Another useful feature I want to point out. I'm going to zoom out a bit so you can see smaller size poster, but you can see this gray area around the poster itself. This gray area is still a usable working space. So if that text, I think probably is a bit too much, but I still cannot decide how much of it I want to keep. I want to create a copy of it and simply paste it outside here. I can keep this as my worktop surface 
and then start cutting down a bit of this text. That potentially will give me more space for images, for example, but I may decide later on, actually, I would rather keep some of this additional text. It's still available here. Also, if you're still wondering, for example, which of two pictures will look better, you can keep them both on the site and just drag them on the poster, see how this one looks, move it outside again. So use this space as your work surface the same way you would use your desk to spread around all materials you need until you finalize your poster. When you're done with your poster, please remember to delete all of these extra elements. I'm just going to keep this extra text actually and remove this. Simply click on the frame, press delete and job done. And I'm going to zoom in to see the entire poster. And it already starts to look like a poster. You have the headings, you have a clear structure, you have text. What is missing is something that will brighten it up, will bring a bit of life. If it's all text, it will look very, very boring. You'll need to try and add additional non-text elements, graphics, I'll call it in general, but that could be pictures, diagrams, charts, tables, anything that is not text. When you insert a drawing, I'm just going to show uh, a little star, for example, I'm going to insert shape. I'm just going to create a little star like that, a little burst. The default behavior in Publisher is whenever you have an object over text, the text will automatically move out of the way. And in this case, because the object actually has spikes, so there is a little bit of space in between the spikes, the text goes even in between them. This behavior, this is called text wrapping. This is how the text wraps around the image. This doesn't work in PowerPoint. So if you need to do this in PowerPoint to have the text all around the image, you'll need to do it yourself. You'll need to create probably a separate text box for part of the text and a separate box here. While in Publisher, it will automatically be done. In Word as well, text wrapping is an option you can adjust. Like in this case, I'm not particularly keen the way the text goes in the middle between all those spikes. I would rather have it nicely around, not in between. So I can change my text wrapping. Simply go to the drawing tools and you will see wrap text option. And you will see at the moment is through, but I can choose it to be a square. And that means there will be a squarish shape a free space where the image is going to be and the text will go all the way around it. Let me see. As I move the text, it moves, the text moves out of the way. You can change also top and bottom, which means the text will stop above the image and will continue after the image. So you have full control exactly how you want your image to look like in relation with the text. Just going to keep it small there at the top. And don't forget, if your image is large and your text moved out of the way, the chances are your text box is now probably too small to fit all the text. So if you click on the text box and see, and you can see the red dots, which means there is more text than actually is visible. So I can make sure my text box is changed to accommodate the text. So it doesn't matter if you insert a drawing or a picture, the same options apply. You have the wrap text option to adjust how the text wraps around the object itself, the image itself. If you are inserting images, the majority of the times you will be looking for those images online. And there's absolutely nothing wrong with that. Although ideally you would rather go and find your own images. But if you are searching online for images and especially using Google or Bing to find your images, you have to make sure that the images you do use, you are actually allowed to use. I'm not talking about just copyright. Some images you will need to simply ask permission for some images you may need to pay to use them. So you have to be always wary of that and make sure when you're searching for images, you know what you are allowed or not allowed to do with them. So I'm just going to go to Google and show you how to find good images. So I'm just going to choose looking for learning. I'm going to go to images 
and by default it will display every kind of image it will not show if they're copyrighted or not it's going to be any kind of image what you need to do to make sure that the images you are using you actually have permission to use is simply adjust by using the search tools you adjust the usage rights by default it's not filtered by license but you can choose it to show only the ones labeled for non-commercial reuse all those images whoever has uploaded them has already agreed for this image to be used as long as you're not earning money from it which in your case that is the case you are using it for academic purposes so all of those images you can use it's also very important though to find image that will be good quality so when you print it if you are printing a poster when you print it the quality will be maintained what you see on the screen always looks better than what it actually is and in order to ensure that any image that you use is printed in good enough quality you'll need to have at least 150 pixels for every inch you print so if I go for example to use this particular image all I need to do is just even position the cursor on it and you will see it displays the size here in pixels or if I click on it it also will display it on the side here and it will tell me that this is 1024 pixels by 768 pixels so if I round this up to let's say a thousand pixels I need 150 for every inch I print which means I have to divide 1,150 and find out how many inches that allows me to print and that is roughly about 6.7 inches that will be the first measure is the width so a maximum width of the image that I can print and still maintain the quality will be 6.7 inches but because the software measures in centimeters we'll need to make sure we convert this in centimeters so 6.7 inches in centimeters would be 6.7 multiplied by 2.5 roughly which is close to 17 centimeters so if I use this image which now I'm I know I'm allowed to do I can print it a maximum size of about 17 centimeters and that will be still good enough quality don't forget that you still need to reference this image because that image is still not yours you need to reference where you got it so I'm just going to go to view the image itself simply click on the button to view the image because all you saw before was just a preview and then you will see the full size image where you can right click and either save it or directly copy it to paste it on your poster so I'm just going to copy it directly go to my poster and paste it now obviously that's too big so I want to reduce it but I want to make sure that this size is still 17 centimeters or less to make sure that it's going to be a good enough quality to see the size the real size of that image all you need to do is click on the image itself and you see a new tab appears picture tools go to it and right in the corner you will see the size and at the moment is 22 centimeters which is way too big for my quality I calculated that I can get it in good quality if it's 17 centimeters maximum size so I need to reduce the size of this 40 centimeters is within my threshold of 17 no problem at all that will print good enough and now you can see also what I meant with having a color background because the moment I insert an image that is on white background it just doesn't look right so you'll need to either simply use white background or find a way to make sure this image doesn't look like it's a patch on the poster and instead looks like a proper image that you've used a simple thing you can do is put a border around the image itself and you can do that simply by going to the picture tools and you will see picture border and simply choose to have let's say black border you can choose it to be slightly thicker whatever is best case for you and now it doesn't look like a patch it looks like an image that you've intentionally used like that 
if you need to use any of those tricks, if you want to use borders for those images, just make sure that all the images you use have the same border to keep the consistent look. It's very, very important to keep it consistent. So this is for images, using images. There are other places where you can search for images. I'm just going to go back here. And instead of just searching in Google, you can search in Bing. Bing will also give you an option to filter by license. So if I go to search for images, some of the images obviously will be the same, but it's going to show you different ones as well. And there is the option for a license. You can either choose them to be public domain, um, free to modify, share or use commercially, free to uh, modify, share and use, free to share and use in your case would probably be the best option because you're not trying to sell it. So all you need is permission to use it. So either public domain or free to share and use would be the options, I think, in your case. And if I click on that, you can see that you have different images already showing. So that is one useful tool you can use. There is also another website, another couple of websites you can use. You can find the links again on the LDC pages, just on below the logos, there are a couple of links. One of them is called Pixabay. The other one is called FreePick. So I'm just going to show you Pixabay. And I'm just going to choose learning again. And to find out more about a particular image, you can just click on it and you will see here on the site information about the usage rights. In this case, it says free for commercial use, no attribution required, which means you don't need to reference. Now that may be slightly worrying for some of you because then you're not sure if your lecturers may become worried that you've simply forgotten to reference. There is no need, but if you're worried, you can just use the web address of that image as a reference. And if you choose to download, it also gives you an option of what quality size you want it. So you can download it in high quality if you want it to, have to be bigger on the poster itself or smaller, depending on your needs. So Pixabay is one of those uh, websites and the other one is FreePick. And again, here you have large gallery of images that you can use. Okay, going back to the poster. The other option that can bring something different to a poster is not just images. It's also to use something like a table or a diagram. I want to show you how to create tables. It's very straightforward. Insert and then choose table and you can choose what kind of size. It's exactly the same as in Word, as in PowerPoint. However, the one strange thing about tables in Publisher is that by default, they will come completely transparent. Not even the borders will be visible. So obviously that's not very useful. So you can choose different design. You simply go to the table tools design option and you will see a lot of default different designs for your tables and they will be in the same color scheme. So I can choose, let's say this one. And you can stretch it, make it bigger, you can adjust it, you can move it to a different place. And that's your table. In terms of diagrams, very useful in a lot of circumstances to use diagrams because they save a lot of words that you would normally have to write to describe something like a process, for example, or pros and cons of certain um, concept. Instead, you can show it as a diagram, which will break up the text in the poster, it will be more interesting to look at. It will be a lot quicker for people to understand as well. 
you can't create diagrams completely from scratch by using lines and boxes and, and arrows but usually they end up not looking very good instead what you can do is use the smart art tools in word and in powerpoint to design your diagrams they don't exist in publisher but all you need to do is simply open a word document or a powerpoint presentation create a diagram there and then copy and paste it on your poster. At any stage, you're not limited to just using Publisher, for example, or just PowerPoint for whatever it is that you're trying to create. Simply use the best tool for that particular task and assemble it in the right software. So if you're creating a chart, don't try to do it in here. Don't try to do it in PowerPoint. Create it in Excel or SPSS or Minitab or whatever other software you use to analyze your information and then simply copy and paste it on the poster. So I'm just going to open PowerPoint. I'm going to change the layout completely blank. So starting with the blank presentation. And then if you go to the insert tab, you'll see the smart art option. If you know roughly what kind of diagram you're creating, for example, if you're trying to uh, explain a reflective cycle, just go to the cycles and look at those diagrams. If you're trying to explain a linear process, just look at those. If you're trying to explain an organizational structure, you can go to hierarchy. Or some sort of relationship, pros and cons, for example. Simply use the right kind of diagram. If you're not sure, just look through all of them. Any kind of diagram you choose, you can click on it. It gives you a preview and it gives you a description of what this could be used for and also if there are any limitations. I'm going to show you a hierarchical one because they're probably more complicated than the rest. So I'm just going to choose a simple one like that and insert. The moment it creates the smart art diagram, it will open up with also a text box on the side with bullets. Each of those bullets corresponds to an item in the diagram. So you can see the top bullet here is this box. So if I type my text here, say that's the boss, top of the organization, it will automatically put in the text in the correct box. Under this bullet, you will see on the next level, there are two items. So this one, say manager one, this one is manager two. And this item under manager one, you can see it also highlights here, is worker one of manager one. This one is worker two of manager one. This one is worker one of manager two. I name them like that so you can see where they belong within the structure itself. Now, this is fairly straightforward. However, if you need to add elements to this diagram. For example, if I want to create another manager, I want to create manager three. What happens is you just treat this like a normal Word document where your bullets will just need to, you need to add another bullet. So going after the last item, if you press enter, it just creates another bullet. It will automatically create it at the same level as the last one where you were. So it will create another worker because I was just add another worker. But you can go right at the top where Smart Art Tools are, and you will see an option here to promote, which means move it higher up the hierarchy. And that then is Manager 3. So if I want to create a worker for this manager, I need another bullet, which will create another box. So I just press Enter, but that created at the same level as the manager. So I need to demote, move it lower down, and say this is Worker 1 of Manager 3. So you can add elements at any point. So if I need, for example, another worker here, I just go after that and just create it. Worker 2 of Manager 2. If you want to remove an item, you simply click on the object itself, press Delete. It will remove it and will rearrange the diagram to fit. So you can simply go there and delete. After you've put in the main content, you can also have a look at the different layouts. See if any of the others may be better suited for your content. If they make more sense, if they're better 
for uh, the space you've got. I'll look through all of them, see if any of them are any better. So once you have picked the one you want, you can also apply different colors while remembering you have to match the color scheme of the poster. So I'm just going to keep, keep it simple. And also you have different styles and that will be shading, edges, 3D options. So find one that will be best for your case. And when you're happy with your design, you can just right click on any white space around this diagram inside the diagram itself and then copy. Go to your poster, right click and paste. And there is your diagram. Always keep the original file that you use to create that diagram, because if you find a typo, if you need to modify something, you cannot modify it within Publisher, because if you click on it, you will see it's a picture. It's just an image. You cannot edit. So keep the original document in case you need to modify something. Simply just save it as a PowerPoint file. And that means if you need to modify something, you can just go edit it. So going back here, so I showed you how to put in text, how to format the text, how to include images, um, how to make sure the size of the images is good and they can actually use the image. So there's no copyright uh, issues. It's always a good idea while you're still inserting the image, while you still have the original source of that image, to take a note at least of the web address. Ideally, open your handbook, look at what reference guidelines you have to use, look at them and find how to, to reference that particular image. But at least put the link somewhere and then if you need extra information you can always go back to that image and find that extra information for your reference list. Your references obviously need to be somewhere uh, down here. If you have space you can create the heading for references to be the same design as all the other sections but it will be absolutely fine if you don't have space and you simply create a text box and say References. It doesn't need to be even as big as the rest. As long as it's clear, it's a heading. And you can start building up your reference list. Every time you put something in there that requires referencing, you can put it in the reference list. And then when you have all the information you need, you can go and format it properly according to your module handbook uh, instructions. All the while, while you're designing this poster, it's a really good idea to keep saving the document. Simply go to File and then Save As. Put it somewhere you can find it again. Give it a good name. And just keep saving regularly. Don't wait until you have done the bulk of the work before you save, because if the computer crashes, you're going to lose everything. So make sure you're saving regularly. And when you think you are done with the poster and you have everything the way you want it to be, and you want to just have a look if it's going to be okay as a big poster, it's a really good idea to print a small copy first, just for yourself, or even show it to someone just to have a one quick critical glance on it to give you basic feedback, um, something that you may not have noticed, something that you may have omitted, something um, that you will not see because you, when you work, you're way too close to the work you do, so you don't see sometimes quite obvious things. When you are ready, just save it as a PDF file. Simply choose save as type, choose PDF and save. When you save it as a PDF file, it will automatically open the file itself in Adobe Acrobat Reader and it will display it. And that is going to be the file that you will need to submit if you're required to submit it, return it in, or you need to send to, to be printed 
This is the file that you are sending to your lecturer, the PDF file, not the publisher file. The publisher file is the one you edit. The one that you're submitting is the PDF file. Obviously, this is not a complete poster. You can still see um, things are not quite tidied at all. Um, but this would be the file that is going to be the final submission. If you want to print a small copy of this file, you can go to File and then choose Print. It will open up the print box. Choose the correct printer if you want it colored or not and simply choose the option for it to fit. I've designed the poster as A1. The PDF file is also A1 because it was created on the basis of the publisher file. However, if I choose this option to print the PDF file, it will resize it to fit whatever the paper size is. So I can go and choose, is it A4? Or I can print it even A3 and simply tell it to fit and it will print the same poster simply shrunk to fit A3. Always keep saving your publisher file as well because you cannot edit the PDF file and if you find something that is mistyped or you want to edit some of the information without the publisher file you'll have to start again from scratch. You cannot edit the PDF so make sure you keep saving your publisher file and it's up to date and you have it somewhere where you can um, open it up again. So these are all the elements you would need to create a poster and you should have enough tools now to help you build your own poster with your own information and the standard layout that I show here as I said may not be suitable for your content so be prepared to start again. If you have to change drastically for example to a portrait poster with rows it's a really good idea instead of just rearranging this one, save it under a different name. So you have the previous version still saved, preserved, just in case the new layout doesn't work and it's even worse. So when you do major changes, just save it under a different name. You can simply call them version one, version two, or give them something more appropriate as a name, something more meaningful, but make sure you do save regularly different versions of your designs that will save you a lot of time if you have to go back to a previous design and good luck